Let's get into it now. A spoiler-free movie review, The Nun 2. Quite possibly the least excited I've ever been for a horror movie sequel. And quite honestly, I'm surprised this movie has a part two because the story in the first one was so paper thin and so boring really throughout that I'm surprised they decided to give it another run for The Nun. But the first one did have some box office success. I think it's because it is inside of that Conjuring universe and everything James Wan has created with all these characters from The Conjuring and Annabelle, even like Yorana, all these movies working together as one. I feel like they thought they could make some money on this movie as well. So what this movie is about, it takes place four years after the events of The Nun Part 1. You're in 1956 France in this movie. A priest gets violently murdered. You see in the trailer that he gets burned to death. And then you have Sister Irene returning to investigate. And then Sister Irene goes face to face with evil again, much like you would experience in any other possession exorcism movie like this. So first impressions of this movie, I always judge a horror movie based on the first 20 minutes because those are so crucial to how I'm going to feel throughout this entire movie. You always get that opening sequence that has some kind of big kill. In this case, you find out exactly what happens to the priest. And I was so underwhelmed at that opening sequence that I thought, oh man, they're going to do it again. They're going to drag out this entire story. And there's not going to be anything scary. And it's going to be a lot of talking. And we're going to eventually have this scene where they go and find out the real mystery and then go rush back and do all these things. Just seemed like a big cliche to start out this movie. And even getting into some of the characters, I felt like, oh, man, there's really going to be nothing here to chew on. But after that first act, which was really kind of painfully slow, I feel like this movie started to come into its own right around that second act. The production on this movie is very slick and very nicely produced. And I don't always shout out to editing in movies or makeup design or special effects or even stunt performers. But through all the horror elements that really banked on that in this movie, I thought, hey, they actually did a really good job here because a lot of it is in that presentation of seeing something scary. The makeup and the visual effects on The Nun are a lot better in this movie. I still don't think just the presence of her on screen makes me scared in any way. So it's everything they have to build around it that actually ends up working in this movie. But the way I compare this movie, since it's inside of the Conjuring universe, that first Conjuring from 2013 did such a great job of building suspense and making you feel scared as the viewer. So I compare all of these movies inside of this universe to how that first one made me feel, which is one of my favorite horror movies of all time. I still don't think any movie has captured that same energy as the first one in the story that James Wan created in that initial Conjuring movie. They've all just been kind of riding the coattails and riding the formula of the Conjuring. And this movie is a perfect example of that because it is so reliant on the jump scares. And I just feel like that is so cheap to the viewer. I feel like whenever you just have to bank on throwing things out of the screen to scare us, you really aren't doing that great of a job at creating a horror movie and creating these moments that we're going to look back and remember on as actually being things that stood out from this movie. So that is always what I look for. But where this movie started to win me over is they did a pretty good job at creating these characters and getting you invested in these stories. You have a relationship between one of the people that works at this boarding school where they are investigating all these things that are starting to happen. And he has a relationship with one of the students. He helps her out and some of the other kids make fun of them for their relationship, which this movie could have gone in a very weird direction. But luckily, at the core of it, it was wholesome. So I felt a little bit of an emotional connection of wanting to see the best result possible for all of these characters because you start to care about them. And then I really found myself liking all the visuals in this movie that were really good. And I would almost describe them as like horror wholesome. I think about my mom who loves horror movies but she doesn't like any horror movies that are overly gruesome or just overly violent. This one is like right there in the middle. Even though this movie is rated R, I think if they tweak just a couple of things, they probably could have got a PG-13 rating. But I know sometimes parents wonder if movies are okay for their younger kids who love horror movies. I actually think this one would be fine. There's no nudity. I don't even think there's a whole lot of swear words in this movie. So at the core of this movie, I found it to be a little bit wholesome. It feels very much Hollywood horror to me, which over time I find myself enjoying parts of it because... 
even though I feel like Hollywood horror kind of takes the fun out of it, it takes the creativity, it takes the just overall rawness of horror movies and kind of evaporates that all away to appeal to a wider audience, what you do get is some great visual effects and some great moments that you can only get with a budget like that, which this movie cost $38 million to make. And you can really tell they spent a lot of that on getting the visual effects right. So I found myself really enjoying it, even though nothing really stood out on its own. The third act very much made up for that first act, which was pretty boring overall, but it really got there in the end. You can really tell where they spent the money on for this movie, and it's surprisingly doing pretty well for a horror movie that I feel like didn't really have a whole lot of buzz around the sequel. In its first 10 days, it has made $56.5 million at the box office, which is... 33% less than The Nun Part 1. But again, with no real buzz around it, also with the strike going on and the actors and director not being able to promote this movie, I actually think that is a pretty good number, especially considering that we are only really just starting to dip our toes into the Halloween horror season, only being halfway through September. So I think this one has some life to it. I think if it can make a little bit more money as we get closer to Halloween, we're probably going to get that Nun 3 and get that full-on Nun trilogy. I think Warner Brothers will still invest in another Nun movie. I was looking at some numbers recently that somebody just posted about Warner Brothers. They have taken four big financial losses this year with Magic Mike's The Last Dance, Shazam! Fury of the Gods, The Flash, and Blue Beetle, both being their biggest losses of the year. But they've also been really profitable with Barbie, which is the highest grossing movie of the year. I feel like with that movie alone, they're going to be doing pretty well. But they also had some surprising hits that made some money with Meg 2, The Trench, The Nun, still bringing in a pretty good amount of money like we've been talking about, Creed 3, and Evil Dead Rise. So I love the fact that two of those movies are horror movies, which I feel are kind of like the cash cow inside of Hollywood because you can spend less money on them. $38 million in the grand scheme of things is nothing when you're spending over 200 sometimes 250 to make a superhero movie. You spend, a, you know, under $40 million and you make double, sometimes triple that. I feel like that is the sweet spot. But in order to really make money in horror, you have to make things that stand out. You have to make things that are original and unique. And that's where you kind of hit it and strike it big because you don't spend a whole lot of money, but everybody loves it and wants to go see it. And then you make it all back at the box office. But you're really not going to do that with a movie like The Nun that for the most part is kind of painting by numbers. But I feel like at the core of it, when I go into a horror movie, I just want to be entertained. I just want to have some good visuals that even though in this case they don't really scare you, but they are frightening. Like, I won't deny them that. It is a very creepy-looking nun, and there are some other surprises in there that I thought, hey, this is actually pretty cool. And I think the only real benefit of watching this movie on the big screen is I had all my attention towards it, and also just being inside a dark theater, you start to get a little bit jumpy, you start to get a little bit more antsy than you would watching this movie at home. Although I think the scariest part for me was at one point where somebody just started walking on the side of me and they kind of look ghostly because you're in a completely dark theater and also this movie is just very dark overall on screen. So it's the most pitch black that I ever really see the theater getting and to see just a little bit of light in the corner, that's what freaked me out more than anything that was on screen. So for The Nun 2, when it comes to the rating, I would say going into this, I was expecting to give it about a 2.5 right in the middle. And it also kind of left me wanting more. I thought I was going to go and see this movie and not want to see a Nun 3. And I won't say that I would be excited about a Nun 3, but I would definitely go watch it in theaters again. So it went from that 2.5 up to that 3. And I've also just been thinking about this movie a lot after watching it. So I feel like it did leave a little bit of an impression on me. And I think if you go watch this for the pure entertainment value of just loving horror movies and wanting to see something new in theaters, I think it's a good time. And if, like me, you have a mom who loves horror movies, I think they would enjoy this too. So for The Nun 2, this is surprising to me. I'm giving it 3.5 out of 5 goats. And you got to watch the movie to find out why it's goats.